if you've seen Fast and Furious, you know how they, they talk about race wars. They plan all year for that, and like that's like their big event. That's kind of what Wave Wave Rave is for us. At this event, you know, everyone that's when everyone gets together. It's like four days of camping at this campground up there. The campground's right on Lake Michigan, so we put the skis in the water Thursday, and then they stay in till Sunday. We ride every day. It's just this big, huge like, free ride fun party event. I'm Skyler. Um, yeah, me and Tyler met um, going to Tech. Uh, before then, though, um, kind of always been into power sports. I started really with a whole background in snowmobiling. Um, started off, my dad started me on a uh, Articat Kitty Cat when I was two years old. Um, rode my whole life. And then when I was like eight or nine, I asked my dad, I was like, hey, I mean, where where can I go to college and then still ride my sled? And he's like, oh, there's a school in the UP, uh, Michigan Tech. You should go to that. And, set my heart on it and ended up doing that and you know the rest is history but power sports is uh has always been a part of my life and you know it's brought brought me to a lot of really fun adventures and really cool things so i remember the first time i visited tech it was kind of bizarre you drive in from wherever and you just see this corner lot of just snowmobiles like they had actual <laughs> snowmobile parking on the campus where you know, kids can bring their sleds out and park it there. And this is just like 50 sleds parking there. And then we were in a fraternity and same deal. There was probably always five, you know, four or five sleds in the front yard just waiting to be rowed at any given time. So it was definitely unique. And and you could also get to the trails right from that lot. Mm -hmm. You know, just drive behind the house, hook up to the trails and get anywhere, anywhere you want to go. So that was a very unique experience. I had a piece of crap sled up there that I broke way too many times. I had to rebuild the engine um yeah those like small engine sports are not forgiving and they can be expensive no definitely not dude i i was fortunate enough uh my sled was decent when i was up there i mean we had a few few breakdowns here and there um but yeah i mean with with living in sig tower right there i mean the trail was right in the back and then it went right to campus so you know riding to school is like they're not joking about that i usually rode to class like three four days a week and you know, it was perfect because I'd bring all my gear and then I could just hop on the trail and go for a ride after class. I love it. Wake back up after falling asleep in class. <laughs> Definitely. So now you're you're graduated and you've been for a while. You moved down to lower Michigan. And mm -hmm. I think you have a similar story to me. You know, I, I found that when I moved back to lower Michigan, I tried to maintain that relationship with the snowmobile, but it was it was difficult because you had to it, similar to snowboard, you have to drive so far to kind of find the snow and enjoy it. And it's so pricey. And if you're doing a sled, you have to tow a trailer, load it up, unload it. It's just like very stressful. And it, and I got to a point where I told myself, I'm never buying a new sled. I'm just going to ride this thing till it dies. I'll lean into snowboarding, which I love just as much. And it's you know way easier, way, way less stressful to bring that thing around. Mm -hmm. um, so like you had a similar story. And how did that go for you? Yeah, no, I was it was pretty spot on similar to you. I mean, I took for granted, like all my riding buddies up there, like, you know, you'd, you'd put a text out in our group chat and, you know, you got any day of the week, three, four guys that are always down to ride. I moved back home and like all my friends with sleds moved away, you know, sled or snow is only here for three months out of the year, as opposed to six months out of the year. And, you know, we're driving an hour or two hours every, every time we want to get on them. It was, it definitely, it definitely burned me out on the sport for sure. And so you, you kind of redirected that you like, when did you decide to take up jet skiing or how did that come about? Yeah. So, um, I guess boating has always been a part of my life. So when I, when I got out of college, I was like, you know what, like got a big boy job now. I want to boat. Like that's, that's gonna be my cool thing that I got. So I got a boat and met some other people with boats. And then one day we were out driving around and there were all these dudes um, out on stand-up jet skis. And we we're like, oh, let's uh let's throw a V-weight for them and see if they'll jump off our waves. So we're we're driving side by side, you know, real slow, boats just barely up on plane, like throwing the biggest wave we can. And then all these dudes, like they're running right through the middle of us, and they start like throwing backflips and 360s and like all these crazy tricks off the back of our boats. And we're like, they were all friends of my buddies, but I had never 
seen that before. It was like, I didn't even know you could do that on, on a boat or on a jet ski. You know, I thought it was only like dirt bikes and like crazy freestyle dudes that are doing that. So from there it was like, okay, like I got to get into this, you know, this is something I got to do. <laughs> Were you riding on Lake Michigan at the time or was this one of the inland lakes? This was a inland lake. Um, the, it's a spot up by us. We just call it the pits, but it's, um, bass recreational area um part of the grand river um it's like the big river and then like a little bayou that shoots off of it kind of a it was kind of a little party cove for us and then uh yeah they just all happened to be out that day too so that's great so you you kind of got your you got the itch did you just oh, yeah. go out and buy one or or what what did that kind of turn into yeah no it uh it started off like i mean i still I still had my sled at the time and like when i got when i got the boat like i didn't think about financing or paying for it or anything like that so like i stretched myself pretty thin to get the boat but it was like you know one day i'm gonna get one of these things and do it so um ended up selling the sled that fall or that winter and then the following summer i bought like this piece of crap kawasaki not a piece of crap actually i bought it from a friend so i can't say that <laughs> i bought an old kawasaki 750 like starter stand up you know like something to get on the water basically and then uh rip that for a summer maybe three four months and then moved on to um a super jet which is kind of like you're pretty like that's a pretty good one to get out and you know do about anything with and then uh you know the the bug got me then and kind of snowballed ever since so yeah so there's there's a couple ways we can take this because you have dove into a couple of different skis that you've owned jet skis that you've owned mm -hmm. and i mean you had the boat you went out and bought this thing or you bought it from your friend and you leveled up from there like i don't know where where are you riding at this point and are you like meeting up with people like i kind of just want to hear about how you evolved through like skills with this and deciding to upgrade and and uh i don't know maybe you can get to the point with where you're at now and what you're you're thinking about doing yeah no problem um so yeah when i first bought the the kawasaki which was my first one um that was pretty much like i really those guys that were like jumping off the back of my boat and like doing all the cool stuff like i didn't really ride with them um mostly because it was like i i can't keep up with them or you know really really do any of the cool stuff that they were doing um so yeah whenever we would go boating i would throw the ski in the back of the truck and take that along with me and a lot of my buddies were like you know they've been around boats too so i'd have them drive my boat for me and then i'd go try to jump the waves off the back of it with the ski and you know alert try to learn as much as I can and do what I could. Um, and then that summer there's, there's an event that uh, the local group around me puts on. Um, it's called wave rave. It's up by uh, silver Lake sand dunes. And okay. it's this big, um, this big stand up jet ski event. Uh, usually there's, uh, I don't know the best way to describe it. It would be like, if you've seen fast and furious, you know what, uh, you know how they, they talk about race wars mm -hmm. and that's like their big thing like they plan all year for that and like that's like their big event um that's kind of what wave, wave rave is for us so at this event you know everyone that's when everyone gets together it's like four days of camping at this campground up there the campground's right on lake michigan so we put the skis in the water thursday and then they stay in till sunday we ride every day and it's just this big, huge, like free ride fun party event. I went there um, my first year with like my old Kawasaki and I was like kind of the new kid, like pretty shy, like really didn't know anybody. Everybody had like better stuff than me. Um, so I was kind of out of my element. And then like everybody there was like super welcoming to me. Like this dude that I didn't even know came up. He's like, oh dude, I used to have one of those things. like." try my ski out and he had like this super cool like old like restored one and you know i'm like i never met the guy but he's like let me rip his ski around I'm like all right these guys are pretty cool and like watching them go out on their 
on their aftermarkets and their freestyle skis. Um, it it really like it really got the bug going for me. So I got home that Sunday. No, I got home Saturday night that week, and the following Sunday I went and bought a new a like a super jet. So like leveled up on skis then. I was like, all right, I'm I'm doing this. Like I'm getting into it. So um, yeah, kind of kind of progressed from there. Um, a big thing was I didn't have a wetsuit either, and that's that summer two three summers ago. You know the lake was super cold, so once it started getting cooler outside, um, I didn't have a means to go in. So got a wetsuit, and I lived about five minutes from the boat launch at the time um, on the other side of Holland. And I would literally just leave my ski in the back of my truck and, you know, three, four days a week, I'd get out of work, go straight to the launch and then just go right around on the lake and try to try to learn, try to get better at it. And um, yeah, eventually, eventually started progressing. So, so there's, there's a handful of things. Uh... First of all, Silver Lake Sand Dunes is epic. I finally went there, and even though I've lived in Michigan my whole life, I've never been there. Oh, yeah. I took my truck, my daily driver there, and <laughs> oh, my God, I got a belly a couple times. Or, yeah, I think it was once, but that thing did good. I beat the piss out of it. My two kids are in the back seat, just strapped in their car seat. And then oh, every time we hit a bump, they're just like, whoa, whoa, dad, whoa. <laughs> um, one of the kids was so tired that she fell asleep even though we're ripping around this thing. Oh, so that's Chelsea, amazing you can we'll sleep through that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Chelsea, my wife, gets in the back. She's like, well, I don't want her to snap her neck. So she sits in the back and just holds her head against the against the car seat. We do one more loop and then head it back. But, oh, yeah. man, this, the Silver Lake Sand Dunes community is bonkers. I mean, Yo, you probably know the state parks that, that I'm talking about, but everyone parks there. They bring their boat, their you know, side by side, they're off road truck, whatever. And it just seems like that campground, there's always somebody just like not revving, but like puts them through the through the plot. And then they have the lake right there. Mm-hmm. So it's just like a massive community based around, you know, off roading or sand yeah. duning. And now you're saying that they have this whole bash that's close to there for for jet skiing, which yep. until this episode, I didn't even know that was a thing. Um <laughs> Is there a bunch of those like year round in Michigan? No, it's really the only the only big Mich. Well, that's the only big Michigan one on um, on the west side. Um, there's one on the east side uh, called Brave the Wave at um, at Lake Orion. Um, okay, that one is like that one's not as much of a. Uh, it's not on like a big like big surf lake, um, so I think that one. I can't remember. I know they do a lot of flat water riding, and I don't know. There might be some racing and stuff like that as well. Okay. Yeah, and this this might be an opportunity to kind of sales pitch Michigan because I, I have a lot of cousins that live in Georgia, and I remember one time that he asked me because he was so curious about the water in Michigan, and I never thought about it. I was just I was a kid at the time. It's like, do you guys get white caps on the Great Lakes? I don't even know if I'd seen the ocean at this point in time. It's just like, yeah, I mean, isn't that normal? And like thinking about it now, kind of reflecting, it's like we have so much water, whereas Georgia, they don't have, like water is just foreign to them. Mm-hmm. Um, I can go five minutes up the road, less than that, and get in a kayak. I can go swim at, you know, the local beach or whatever. And that's just kind of bizarre if if you're not used to it. Granted, I never get out on a jet ski or a speedboat or anything, so that's that's a gem. But I don't think people fully understand all that you can do within the lakes here. I mean, we have we have shipwrecks in the Great Lakes. We have scuba diving. There's people that that have wetsuits and they go out in the winter on like Lake Superior and actually do surfing. So there's all this stuff that you can kind of do in the ocean. There's like uh, large large fish boats. People will go out into the middle of like Mission, like Superior, like Huron, whatever, and they'll they'll do like charters, they'll do charter fishing trips. So it's kind of bizarre all the stuff that you can do on the Great Lakes, let alone the inland lakes, um, and just like how I feel like we take advantage of that. It is really amazing. Like 
how much we we do take the lakeshore for granted mm -hmm. i mean like i i just got back from a work trip down in mexico and we were talking like oh what, what are you guys gonna do for the weekend and they're like oh we're going to a, the lake and i was like oh sweet like how far away is that for you and they're telling me yeah we're gonna drive four hours to to go to like this some some inland lake and i'm like wow we we really are blessed to to have this you know this giant body of water you know all the way around us that you know we can do all these cool sports on yeah and i don't even think about it too often i, I really do love michigan i feel like the only thing we're lacking is altitude but mm -hmm. you know if you go out to colorado they don't have lakes like you know it's if you abuse one of them like you lose the other yeah um so that's that's really cool so you you mentioned that there you mentioned flat riding which kind of hints to me that there's different styles of riding when you're you're like taking these jet skis and doing tricks with them can you kind of go into that yeah so um so flat water skis um so there's i guess these are all with with stand-up jet skis too they're not like your your typical like sea do sit down wave runners these are all um the flat water skis are going to be a lot lighter of a hull most of them are, are made of like you know partial carbon fiber partial fiberglass or a lot of the new ones nowadays are just full carbon fiber um so they're super light like if you get a, a hull with no motor or anything in it it usually only weighs like 60 70 pounds um now that being said like they're not typically as strong as the other kind which is surf skis um but they're made to ride only flat water so you go out on a lake and you do a setup wake, you do a little U, and you do any of the tricks that you're gonna do off of your own wake or like a boat wake or something going by. Um, and then they'll typically, a lot of those guys, they'll throw combos and stuff off of that. So say they'll do a setup wake, throw a backflip, land, power right back through, you know, throw all these consecutive backflips one after another, 360s and stuff all through it. Um, but you're not like, you know, speeding around a lake or anything like that it's it's kind of like in a contained area um now the the type of riding that i do mostly is surf riding so my ski it doesn't have any carbon fiber it's all fiberglass um it's a lot heavier like the hull itself dry or you know with no components in it i think it's 115 120 pounds um, over double the weight or about double yeah the weight. Yeah, so quite a bit more. Um, my motor is a lot smaller than a lot of the the flat water ski guys because those guys need they need as much power as they can get to get that ski out of the water and do a full backflip off of it. Um, me, when I'm out, you know, jumping waves and stuff, I don't need as much power. So those guys, if you want to get into you know the the mechanics or specifics of it, those guys will run um, like a 900 to a 1200 cc power valve motor um mine and my ski it's it's a 781 um non-power valve motor so just plain carbureted you know straight up that's that's all that's going on in it um but it's it's plenty of power for for the riding that that we do out here okay and, and that's just because you can you can find more natural waves right you're riding them on lake michigan I assume people do this out on the ocean and they just use the natural, you know, natural waves to, to do all their tricks and stuff. Yep. Yeah. You try, you go out. Um, typically, I mean, we're every day, me and my buddies, we're, we're checking the surf or the wave wave forecast, you know, like, Hey dude, it's, you know, five to sevens today. What time are you out? Like, um, anytime, anytime there's decent waves, we'll try to be out, you know, three to fives is like an okay day. Um, but you know, five to sevens or anything bigger than that is like, you know, you can pretty much do anything you want off of those. Um, and then we ride like, usually you'll go and you try to ride right, right before the wave will break. Basically is kind of the, the sweet spot area you want to be in. You can see where it kind of starts trickle, starting to curl right at the top. And um, that's, that's like the best time that you'll catch like an actual lip off of it. To be able to throw you know throw flips or throw 360s whatever you're trying to do that's so cool I, i've seen a lot of people do it on you know just flat lakes and mm -hmm. 
like you said, videos of just people doing like eight backflips in a row. And <laughs> I've never been on a stand up jet ski. That's something I've always wanted to do. I actually think jet skiing is kind of meh, like sit down ones. Because mm-hmm. unlike a snowmobile where you can go out and ride and turn your sled off in the middle of the woods, soak it in, talk to your friends, jet skiing, you, you know, you have to throw an anchor down or something. Otherwise, you're just sitting there bobbing, running into each other. Um, <laughs> I'm sure it's a lot different when you're out there, like just hitting waves and doing cool tricks with your friends and stuff like that. Um, yeah, where do I want to go with this? You you mentioned in the pre-call that that you can't really buy stock skis for this sport. So, is there a lot of like tuning or upgrades or like what kind of changes do you, do you have to do to actually make it work for what you're doing? Yeah, so there's only so there. Are, I think they're still making them right now, but Crash used to make a full, complete aftermarket ski that you could buy. Um, There's one other one, uh, Lee Stone just started making ready-to-ride aftermarket skis that can backflip, and that's like the biggest thing that's ever happened for for this community. But right, like the way it is right now for us, um, you buy your hull, you buy your motor, you buy the pump, pull, you know, all the components, typically come from different companies and then you're the one that you know you get it all in your garage and piece it all together and basically build the ski from there um so it's a lot of like you know it's a really tight-knit community because you're like oh you know so and so builds motors down in florida okay well this guy's building exhaust he's out in california stuff like that like you know you you meet all these people with with these little niche components and then uh and then figure out which one which one works the best for what you're doing or you know what your buddies recommend to you so it's pretty it's pretty fun like you know piecing together things and like interchanging parts and finding out what what you like the most really and is that just because it's so niche it's not it's not something you can just buy off the you know off the lot or or is it just like too advanced to do this type of stuff? It's it's such a small market that it really it really doesn't make you know monetary sense for for these companies to do it you know at a at a big big production level. Um, a lot of the a lot of the people do it on the side, you know, just somebody with a machine shop or something like that. They know how to port a motor or something like that. They'll they'll start doing jet ski parts on the side. So it's it's just it's a tight-knit community of of people that uh that do it i guess i would just have to imagine that there's lakes everywhere there's jet skis everywhere you know you do never see the stand-ups and Mm -hmm. i mean you have oceans and same deal most people just have sit downs so they can surf with them and stuff like that so you're telling me that it's so tight-knit the the stand-up scene is small and then even getting into like trick or free rides jet skis is even smaller yeah um can you maybe can you maybe go into like a little bit of detail of what what like a free ride haul and a free ride engine looks like and why why that isn't something you can't just buy from another jet ski manufacturer yeah so um kawasaki and yamaha um yamaha still mass produce stand-ups but um kawasaki do they they might they quit recently but those two companies used to mass produce them like, you know, late eighties, like stand up scene was insane. Like everybody was on stand ups. Um, and then kind of started trickling out after that. Um, nowadays, everything, everything in these aftermarket skis is, is Yamaha based. Um, so they, Yamaha put out the super jet, you know, back in the, the early nineties and then kept that going now they still have them but they're they're four strokes totally different but the two stroke version um you know my the lower end in my motor is a yamaha lower end so they they take these motors and basically build new jugs new top ends for them put power valves on them um you know bore out the the lower case epoxy them it's it's all it you looking at it you wouldn't think it was a yamaha motor but you know it, the bare bones measurements of it, it it all comes from from a yamaha 
platform. And is that just to get more power so you can like literally just crank and command it? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. it's it's all so the Yamaha's those all from the factory were um either a 650 or a 701 cc motor um non-power valve single carb or dual carb um but yeah i mean they they don't make like insane crazy power they're they're great to get out on the lake um but i mean you know since day one since since stand-ups came out people started tweaking them and mm. trying to come up with ways that they could squeeze more power out of them and, and do all that so it's it's kind of I'm sure it's been a snowball effect that's that started way back before you and me were both born. So, yeah. And then the hulls, is there any uniqueness to that that makes it easier to hit those waves or, you know, balance or whatever? Yeah, there's so I ride I ride a Tiger Craft hull, um which uh Tony is is the owner. He he's from out in Jersey. But um those those hulls are those really aren't necessarily based on i i couldn't even tell you what he bases those holes on but um they're a lot shorter overall than than a super jet is that helps you you know get rotation around better spin better um in the front end as well um my ski being a surf ski he's he's got built-in sponsons for the front so if you look at the hull from the front sorry it like it goes straight from the back and then like bulges way out around the front so then as soon as i come into a wave you get way more pop off of the lip from it and that helps you you know get more air and throw those tricks better it's almost like a fatter football yeah yeah that's that's the best way to think about it okay so yeah that, that's What's that? That's really cool. That makes a lot of sense of like why it's so unique. I mean, shit, I, I didn't even hear about this until I started poking around your page. It's like, mm. what the hell is he doing? <laughs> um, yeah, so I think what I want to go into now is is community because that's something that's kind of like a common theme on this podcast is, mm. you know, how the hell did you find this group of guys? You kind of hinted at it, um, but what is it like? I mean, there's clearly events. There's events around the world that, that people probably travel to. Um, I think there's a handful of big events in Michigan. Um, is this a global thing? I mean, I would like to hear about your local community and then how it expands out large. And uh, I mean, maybe even talk about the the group you're in. I think you're a part of a group that goes out pretty regularly. Yeah, um, the group around here, they're called Water Slot Mafia. Um, you know, there's probably, I, shoot, I, I'd say 50 to 100 people around Michigan, um, Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, that Midwestern area um, around here that that's all part of that. Um, but then they all know, ride in the same, they have to ride in different areas, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, everybody rides, you know, their own local communities areas, but you know, there's Facebook pages all over, you know, with everyone, like someone throws up like, Hey, I, I broke my exhaust today. You know who's got one whatever everyone's it's still a tight-knit community um and then like what i was saying the the wave rave event that we have every summer typically that's like the time that everybody you know kind of comes together and everyone gets together and rides um it's a big giant free ride i think last year so it's a four-day event i think last year saturday which is the busiest day i think we had 160 skis on the beach um, so it's like, you know, that's, everybody comes, brings their stuff and talks about, you know, everything they've been doing for the year and we get a chance to catch up. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a really, really cool community. Um, and then outside of that, um, there's groups out on the East coast. Um, they do, they do a ride called wave days, um, out in Virginia. Um, I haven't. Since I just got my aftermarket ski, I haven't had an opportunity to go out there. Um, they just posted dates for it in April, so I'm super excited. That's gonna be my first time, you know, traveling to to go ride a jet ski. Um, also, the first time I've ever rode in salt water. So that mm -hmm. one's gonna be super fun. Um, there's another really big one, um, Daytona Free Ride, that happens down in Daytona Beach. Um, that one. That one's typically in January. They just bumped it out to April from all the hurricanes this year. 
Um, and then, you know, out on the West Coast, there's uh, there's world finals that just happened out on Lake Havasu. Uh, and then they do a bunch of their own free rides. I think Pismo Beach does does their own free ride. And then there's a couple other ones as well. So there's really anywhere you want to ride. There's there's usually a free ride that you can find to, to get into. That's very cool. I, I mean, 150 people in your group. What would you call it? Uh, slut mafia? Something water, slut. Water slut mafia. Yeah. Water <laughs> slut mafia. Yeah. What a fantastic name. Yeah. Like that's 150 cool. people. You think about that, and clearly that's across a couple of states, but it's not small, but it's not big. No. Um, I do have to clarify too, like 160 skis on the beach. Like that doesn't mean like 160 people there. Usually people bring like a few skis with them, just, you mm -hmm. know, typically a couple break and <laughs> you need to bring a couple I mean, backups. <laughs> I'm already thinking about me bringing my kayaks out there just to go watch and uh, join in on the party. I'm, I'm sure there's people that show up just to support their families with, Dude, with no can. swing on by. <laughs> I bring my kids and a uh, cool air and, and, uh, join in on the fun oh yeah more than welcome man <laughs> that's that's really cool that you're going uh you're traveling for it right do, do you know people like not internationally do you know people throughout the united states like just in the forums and stuff like that yeah yeah and the so there's the big forum website is uh xh2o um and i mean that's a that's a global it's it's a website a global website and you know you can you can connect with people from wherever to, you know, ask questions, sit there, bullshit around, talk about, you know, writing stories. Um, there's like a little marketplace on it too, where people buy and sell parts, skis, whatever. Um, but that's really the, the main like hub that everybody, you know, can connect with each other on is that. So. I'm kind of, I'm kind of thinking about forms when we were growing up, you know, people, getting into farms about i don't know off-roading or their truck or something and how how archaic that probably felt at the time just like i don't know this like blocky text that you gotta log into and now you probably Dude, it's still it. like that it, it is exactly is it, really? it literally if you go on the website man it is literally like your epitome of like 2005 forums like <laughs> they're i know that a lot of i know a lot of like migrated to Facebook and yep. you know, that's a much, much, uh, what's the term I'm trying to say? It's, it's an easier barrier, barrier to entry to just like go on there and post a photo or something. Right. And right. It's hilarious that you're saying that. No, there's, there's even, um, one of the main shops that I get my parts from, um, jet maniac, uh, his name's Chris out of Florida. The only way to order from him is to message him on this forum and like, the first couple times when I first got my aftermarket, I like I needed parts for and I had just gotten on this forum and you need the rule is you got to have five posts before you can message somebody. So I'm sitting there like just commenting like all this stupid stuff. I'm like, OK, I just need parts, just need parts like <laughs> that's it. And I don't know, it's it's cool because it's like that website started way back before any of us were writing, but it's mm -hmm. like it's still cool that things like that are still active and it's still the same guys that started it that were riding back in the, the early two thousands or, you know, mid nineties, they're, they're still active on there and still sharing their stories. So it's cool hearing about, you know, how, how this whole sport has changed since then. That's really cool. I, I always do like talking about the community stuff and like the evolution of, of these different unique sports. Cause yeah, you, you never even knew it existed and you just see how deep rooted it is and like how far back it goes, how it's evolved, all this, all this crazy stuff. Um, you did say that the East Coast had an event in April and I know that it's November now and you are still riding, which is just insane to me. I mean, it was like 40 degrees out today, which is not cold, but are you riding through the winter? uh so yeah me and, we talked about it in the pre-show um me and my buddy we made a pack um last year that we were going to ride once a month for an entire year um so i'm going on two years now uh, we got last year and really didn't have a reason to stop so um but yeah i mean for for surf riding um you know the the gales of november no joke i mean that's 
Hmm. It's the best time to be out there. That's when the waves are the biggest. So we it usually once the weather starts getting cold and starts flipping, that, that's you know when when we like to to start going a lot more. Um, I think literally, I think I'm going on Sunday is is the next time I'm going. Um, we got five to sevens in the forecast, and I can't wait. So. <laughs> But you had to throw me under the bus saying that we talked about in the pre-call, didn't you? Oh, um, my bad. <laughs> no, I'm totally kidding. You you mentioned that the uh you said the gales in November. And yeah. I'm kind of thinking about it. I did uh I did use to sail when I worked at Ford. Like there was a Ford sailing club and I just got invited to do this like Wednesday night racing. Oh yeah. It was cool. You just show up, you never met these guys. Hey, you know, hey, I'm gonna be sailing with you for the season. Uh and they went out on Lake Erie. And I don't know if there's a scene of, you know, free ride jet skis. I don't like Erie, but some of the people claimed that sailing on Lake Erie is one of the hardest or most un unpredictable sailing because like winds come from so many different directions. You never know which way the waves are going to go. Mm -hmm. They're always like running into each other. I guess, is there a scene out there? And have you heard similar comments about Lake Erie? I haven't heard, I don't know a ton of the guys that ride the surf out there um, or Lake Erie, but yeah, I mean, it really, you, you definitely have to play the wind direction to, mm -hmm. to where you're going to go and what you're going to do. I mean, if you get, if we get a wind coming from the, the, the South side and we're trying to ride on the North beach, like it's, it gets sketchy for sure. And there's, I mean, even, even Halloween, uh, a couple of days ago, we were talking about riding and i think the forecast was 14 to 15 footers and we're like you know what like wow. we're <laughs> we're gonna draw a line here like we probably shouldn't be out for that so um jesus yeah the wave height like like what we were talking about i mean people really don't you know they don't fully get or understand like how big the waves really can get on the great lakes it's it's pretty wild I don't know if you know anything about surf conditions and on the ocean, but I would imagine five to seven is pretty standard. So that's yeah. like a good day for you. But 14, I think is big anywhere. Yeah, right, right. And the thing with the Great Lakes is like, you know, you don't have ocean waves where they're, they're spaced super far apart. Like, you know, the, the period in between waves on the Great Lakes is so much tighter than, than ocean waves. So if you got 14 footers, like they're stacked, you know, you, yeah, you get you get piled up on one of them. There's one right behind it about to crash on you. Like, <laughs> man, it's I feel like that could be a whole other episode just talking about wave strategy or oh, wave safety and stuff like that. Yeah, there's there's a lot to to get into there. <laughs> this, this has been good, man. I, I always leave. I always try to leave time at the end of the episode to talk about stories. So, do you have any good type two fun stories that? that kind of go into anything we talked about today yeah so um probably our uh our february ride that me and my buddy did um when we went uh it was our our once a month ride and it's like okay we don't want to do it but like we got to go say we did it kind of thing um i think it was like a 40 or 50 degree day and the waves were looking decent so I wanted to ride uh wanted to ride my stand up for that. We went out and we we're having a great day. I had a great afternoon and like it was right after the winter, so like all the icebergs were still up on the on the pier. We went climbing to those, super cool. Um we started riding back and my ski like just died, cut out completely. Um wouldn't start up, wouldn't fire up again. And at that point, like I'm sitting there floating in the water, water temps like 45 degrees and i'm like all right dude like going over to my buddy you gotta tell me back like i can't <laughs> there's no really other option here so sat there and like literally just kind of had to tuck into the tray behind the ski as much as i could to try to stay out of the water and try to stay as warm as i could and yeah we sat there floated through the channel for i think it took us takes about 45 minutes to get back when you're just Gosh. going through like not you can't get up on plane or anything getting towed um so yeah got back froze my butt off jumped in the truck right away and sat there at the parking lot in the heater for as long as i could till i could uh you know start moving again <laughs> yeah it was 
it was definitely a an adventurous day. We do we definitely laugh about that still. Yeah, you don't even think about the breakdowns out there. Yeah, you, know, you, you had to have a tow rope. You had to have a buddy. You could probably get in a lot of a lot of shit if you were riding out in Lake Michigan with with no help. Yeah, the the biggest rule with with doing this kind of riding is you don't ride alone. Like, even if you don't like, even if you don't know how to fix your ski or you don't, you know, really have a full understanding of it. Like, as long as you got somebody there that you know can toss you a line or. If you get separated from your ski and you know the wave you get in between periods of waves and you can't get to the other side of your ski like you need somebody there to to look out for you you know you need the buddy system that's that's kind of terrifying i can't imagine just 45 minutes of just freezing your balls <laughs> off trying to get back to shore oh dude it was it was miserable um now when when we ride now um i've got hand warmers on my ski so okay. all you know you on any boat you've got your cooling lines that piss out all the warm water from the motor we run all of those up through your through your handlebars and uh squirt them out onto your hands and then onto your wetsuit too so as long as the ski is running keyword as long as it's running um then you know you got warm water spraying on you the whole time and usually stay warm pretty well so that's cool i i didn't even know that was a thing mm -hmm. I, I was surprised when i you know, got first got into snowmobiling and learned that there was hand warm warmers on that thing. So, oh yeah, it was a game changer too. Like some of the, some of those would, I swear, it would melt your gloves. Like, especially yeah, those yeah, no like, kidding. Like those got so hot on your hands. Yeah, I remember that. I, I had one go like a pair of hand warmers go out when we were doing our ride up to Copper Harbor, and it was so cold that day. It was like. It was like zero or negative five or something. I had to switch sleds with, with people constantly to not lose my fingers. Yeah. Um, once the sun came up a little bit, it was tolerable. But yeah, those first couple miles were pretty brutal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, well, it's cool, Tyler. Yeah, thank oh, you, man. It's been a great time. I didn't mean to cut you off. What were you going to say? No, really, it was uh, it was just with the leather gloves on, uh, on the sleds, too, and that got all cold. You couldn't move your hands anymore. But anyways. <laughs> yeah. It actually, I mean, do you miss snowmobiling? Is this, like, kind of oh, fun? Oh, dude. If we got snow up here, I would, I'd have a, a sled right next to my ski. <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, that's not awesome. That, it sucks, but yeah well um, it, it it brought me into into this sport and you know i i'm not gonna say i like it more but i've i've definitely enjoyed it as much okay probably probably more but <laughs> yeah it's you're, like, you're so close it, it seems like it's not even a pain in the ass um i mean it's still you still gotta move that thing around load it unload it but yep. that's better than having to trailer something around all the time Oh, absolutely. I, I keep them on a, I use a hitch hauler mostly. So like, I don't even have a trailer. It's just a little, like a little basket kind of looking thing. Uh, in the truck. And then whenever we ride to a lot of the guys will have a beach cart. So like, you don't even have to back into the water. You just oh, drag it off the hitch hauler, walk it in, throw it in. You know, it's so much easier than snowmobile. <laughs> All this stuff I didn't even know existed. It's wild. Oh um, yeah. Yeah. This is fun, man. I I uh I didn't know what to expect when we dove into this, but I seeing your stuff online and just kind of seeing how you're taking some of these Lake Michigan waves, I knew it was going to be a good story. And um, I think it's awesome that there's like such a deep history, a community. You know, there's there's stuff all around the world. There has to be stuff over in Europe and Australia and everything that we don't even know about. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, and I, I just think it's it's cool that we had a similar story where we had to kind of bail on the the snowmobile to find something that was more practical for where we're living these days. Absolutely, you got to find something to scratch the itch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah, I guess if you've made it this far and learned something, thought this was fun, you know, we're trying to hit that hundred subscriber mark. It seems small, but it's like monumental for me. So if you like this, hit subscribe. Uh, I love that you got that pack where you're trying to ride every single month, even through these cold, cold months. Um, yeah. Any, any like shout offs or send offs you want to, you want to give before we close this up? Um, I mean, really check out water Slope mafia on Instagram. Um, those guys are, you know, they're a good time for sure. Um, I'm on Instagram too. If you like, 
some of the videos I'm posting. Um, if you want me to plug mine. Uh, yeah, go ahead. It's a uh, Vanda underscore Boo, V-A-N-D-A underscore B-O-O. Um, yeah, I'm just finally got a GoPro. So like I'm, I'm way behind you guys on, on the whole video stuff, but we're, I'm going to start working on that. <laughs> it's fun, man. It's, it's fun to, if only to document it and have like a place to let it live. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, man, thank you so much for coming on. I hope you had a good time. Yeah, no, I had a great time, man. And, uh, give me a shout next summer once you want to swing in for wave rave. <laughs>